welcome to this view tutorial. In this video, you will learn how to bake view cloud layers to OpenVDB and render them with better lighting detail thanks to multiple scattering. View uses a unique passes system for the different lighting components which make up multiple scattering. Because not all passes are implemented yet, multiple scattering is currently a feature preview in View 2024. Because multiple scattering computations cannot work with infinitely large objects, these controls are only available in VDB clouds with a defined voxel resolution. Now, in previous versions, you would have needed to export a cloud layer as an open VDB and then re-import the VDB file into the scene to render it. In version 2024, you can now skip this process and directly convert a cloud layer within the scene. To bake a cloud layer into a VDB, you need to limit the cloud layer to a cloud zone. The cloud zone can be activated in the top right corner and when you click this icon, you can then move and resize the zone within the cloud layer. In this example, I'm using a cumulus material with individual clouds in the sky, because these clouds show the effect of multiple scattering the best. Here the cloud zone works just fine because I'm isolating a single cloud. However, if you have a cloud layer which covers a lot of the sky, the cloud zone will produce an unpleasant hard edge and you should combine it in that case with the cloud expert zone settings from the smart cloud material. Check out the separate video tutorial about animated OpenVDB export where we show how to use the cloud expert zone settings in the material. Now that the cloud is isolated, I need to right click on the cloud layer and choose convert to VDB. The default resolution is 500 steps, but you can open the options and choose a different resolution if needed. The resolution you require depends on the distance between the cloud and the camera. For close-up shots, you will have to choose a rather high resolution, but for this mid-distance shot, I'll stick to 500 steps. View now bakes the procedural cloud layer into a VDB. In the case of smart clouds, the material node graphs control multiple properties such as density, color or opacity. Every property controlled with a node graph is automatically baked into a separate VDB grid. The total duration of the conversion depends on the resolution, the size of the cloud zone and the complexity of the cloud material. For reference, I'm recording this video on a desktop computer with 32 cores and baking this area takes roughly a minute with 500 steps. Once the cloud has been converted, the original cloud layer is hidden from render and a VDB object has been added to the scene. When we check the material, we can see that the mode is set to converted VDB. This mode reads the information from all of the baked grids, including secondary grids such as opacity and color, and links them internally to the properties of the cloud material. Density, opacity and shadow density for the shadows that the cloud casts onto the scene are still accessible, but everything else is either unnecessary or incompatible with baked VDBs and thus not available. On the lighting and effects tab, we can now adjust the parameters for multiple scattering. Because Views Ray Tracer is a biased render engine, the multiple scattering solution works a bit differently than in a path tracer, for example, where you would usually adjust scattering and absorption of a volume. As mentioned at the beginning of the video, the ray tracer uses a passes system, where it can weigh the individual lighting components that make up the cloud's final light scattering against each other. This system is quite flexible and allows you to easily achieve completely different looks. Just be aware that the changes you make to these settings cannot be previewed in the main camera preview. The preview will always show the cloud without multiple scattering. You need to launch a full render to see the effect. For starters, I'll set all passes to zero and do a render. Thanks to the pre-baked VDB, the render is super fast, way faster than it would be with the original procedural cloud layer. Because we disabled all passes, there's almost no light scattering happening and we get a dark gray cloud. In clouds, light is scattered a large number of times before it exits the cloud. Usually the light doesn't scatter evenly in all directions, but it favors one direction. And this is the N isotropy direction, which is set in the atmosphere editor for the entire scene for all clouds. But in addition to this anisotropic light scattering, some light still scatters uniformly into every direction and this is the isotropic lighting pass. So let's activate this isotropic pass first. This pass highlights the edges of the cloud shapes and makes them brighter. And it is this component of the light scattering that has the strongest influence on the silver lining effect when the clouds are lit from behind. Isotropic light scattering is computed before the actual render starts, so with a larger cloud area spanning lots of kilometers, you might need to wait quite a bit until the render preparation phase is finished and the rendering begins. 
Now, when we compare the two renders, we can clearly see the brighten edges from the isotropic lighting. We'll turn on the isotropic boost next. The boost only has an effect when isotropic is not zero. It controls the brightness of the isotropic lighting and influences the light fall off. Let's do another render and then compare the results. With the isotropic boost, the edge highlighting and the silver lining effect are now more pronounced than before. Next, we need some direct light and shadows in the cloud, which is what the shadow factor controls. Once we add this, the cloud receives some depth thanks to the light coming from the sun. Still, the shadows are pitch black and completely lack any reflected global illumination light. So let's add ambient light to the cloud with the ambient factor and launch another render. Now we have nice looking light scattering in the shadow areas. Okay, so the last pass we haven't tried yet is the sky ambient factor. This pass adds a global color tint coming from the sky and atmosphere to the clouds. However, it's not just a color bias that is mixed with the ambient light. It changes the evaluation of the light scattering within the cloud as well. And it is the second pass after isotropic lighting, which requires some pre-computations before the actual render. And when we compare the renders, the difference is definitely visible and the cloud just blends better into the environment overall. Now that you know what the passes do, you can mix them and change the contribution strength of each factor. Instead of using fully ray traced volumetric shadows, you can also pre compute shadow maps instead, which will add a few seconds of additional preparation time but create an even faster render at the cost of potentially introducing some noise or inaccuracy into the shadows. And if you want the clouds to cast volumetric shadows for god rays, you need to enable volumetric sunlight. The multiple scattering improvements are particularly visible in sunset scenes and with large clouds with lots of thickness. Here's a comparison between the original procedural cloud layer with single scattering and the baked VDB with multiple scattering. There's much more lighting detail visible with multiple scattering and the cloud rendered in a fraction of the time compared to the procedural cloud layer. So we highly recommend you start converting your cloud layers to VDBs, even if you have to wait a bit for the baking process. The gain in render time and lighting quality is absolutely worth it. And to create a full cloudscape, you can convert a larger portion of the cloud layer and then copy and paste the converted VDB to fill the camera view. And if you don't need the silver lining effect or the clouds are not lit from behind, then you can just ignore the isotropic settings and get a really fast render of the cloud compared to the original cloud layer. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial. Music